Do you love black and white photography as much as I do, but you'd like to take it to the next level with something extra creative? How about adding a dramatic splash of color? I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor, and in this video tutorial, you'll learn five different ways that you can easily add color to your black and white images with Luminar Neo. So if you're ready to get creative, let's begin. I've already done some basic edits on this image and converted it to black and white using the tools inside Luminar Neo. That brings us to method number one of adding some color. Simply use the sliders in the black and white tool. Let me show you. You can see that I've already clicked convert to black and white and adjusted the luminance sliders. But there's another section here, saturation. By default, they are all set to zero, meaning none of the colors are saturated at all. So the easiest way to add some color back into your image is to just drag these up. As you can see, it applies to just that color. So if I want the car to show up, in this case, it's blue. So I'm going to grab the blue slider. You'll notice the drawback of this method is that it saturates everything in the image that is blue. So if you don't want that, you can't mask it because what happens if you mask the rest of the image? It turns back into color. That brings me to method number two of ways to add color, still using the black and white tool. Let me put these all back to zero. This time we're going to use the masking section of the tool and simply erase away the parts that I want to be in color. So I'm going to set it to the brush and erase and then lower the strength to about 30. In this case, I want to bring some color back to the car. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit so I can get my brushwork a bit more accurate. Then I'm just going to paint over the car like so. And you could see it's now got a 30% saturation of color only to the car. If you want a little bit more color, just paint over it again. And remember, it's erasing at 30%. Remember, each time you do another pass at 30% with the erase tool, it increases the color that much more. So just proceed until you're happy. I think that looks good. Now you can see that not only is the car blue, but the little tail lights are orange and yellow as well. And the rest of the image is still black and white. Let's move on to method number three, and that is using the toning tool. Now that the image is converted to black and white, there are very few tools that will bring the color back or add color. The tool itself must have that capacity. One such tool is toning. Here we can choose to add a tint of color to the shadows and the highlights if we want. So let's go shadows and let's do something a little bit different. I'm going to get a shade of green. You can adjust the amount of saturation of the color and the overall effect here. Then once again, I'm going to mask it, this time using the brush to paint it in where I want it. Once again, I'm going to choose a lower opacity. I tend to like 30%. And when I start painting, it's going to apply the effect there and nowhere else. I'm just going to paint it into this building here. And now you can see that building has a green tint. But because I've lowered the opacity and the tool only is applying to the shadows, it keeps the luminosity or the contrast of the original image intact. Now, of course, I'm free to adjust the color if I want to shift it a little bit or saturate it or desaturate it. I want it to be very subtle. If you want to apply a different color, just close the tool and then open it again and choose a different tint on the hue scale. This time I'm going to choose something in the pink range. Once again, I'm going to use the brush strength at 30% and I'm going to paint it into a different area, perhaps this building next to the car here. I'm personally not crazy about this kind of effect, but if you do it subtly and keep it minimal, I think you can come up with something really creative and attractive. 
Moving on to tip number four, and that is to duplicate the layer. I shifted the color of the building from pink to more red and added a bit of tint in the sky as well with another application of the toning tool. That's three total if you're keeping track. Now let's duplicate the layer. You can do that really simply by pressing D on the keyboard. If you'd like to get a copy of my free Luminar Neo keyboard shortcuts cheat sheet, I'll put a link for you in the description area below the video. Now that the layer is duplicated, you can play with the blend modes and see what happens. Let's just scroll through them. Multiply, of course, is going to darken the image. You'll notice it also intensifies the color. You can then choose to adjust the opacity of the layer. And of course, you could also mask this layer. The other blend modes that tend to work well when you're doing this kind of thing are overlay or soft light. Hard light is a bit more extreme, but it can work as well. All of those modes add contrast to the image. So for a black and white image, that's a good thing. You want contrast. You'll notice that the deeper and darker the shadows are, the more intense the color is as well. So if that's an issue, you can just adjust the edits. Remember, when you copy a layer, any edits you've done in the original carry forward to the new layer as well. So if we look in the edits panel here, check which layer you're on. It's always got a blue outline around it. I make this mistake myself a lot. So make sure that you are on the right layer. So now I'm just gonna go back to the toning tool and dial these colors down a little bit. In fact, I don't think I even need these toning tools here on the second layer. The duplicate layer with the addition of the blending mode is intensifying the color enough. So I'm going to delete the toning tool from this second layer. You'll notice I did three iterations, so I have to delete it three times. Now let's take a look at what this duplicate layer is doing. I like overlay and the contrast that it's providing here. So I'm gonna go with that one. Before I show you the last way of adding some color to your black and white photos, I just want to let you know that our Luminar Neo signature course is currently on sale for Boxing Day. You can pick it up at 50% off until the end of the day, December 27th. The course includes over 45 video tutorials and 18 hours of educational material as well as the raw files that I'm using to demonstrate in each of the lessons so you can follow along. This is the best price we've ever offered Luminar Neo the complete course for, so make sure you don't miss out. There's a link to the course in the description below. The last way to add some color to your black and white image is to add another layer that has color itself, so a completely different image. Let me show you how it works. I've done a few examples. This one here, I added some bokeh in this layer. If I show you the original normal blend mode, that's what the layer looks like. It's just bokeh that I've added a blur to so that it just ends up being blobs of color. When I applied it as a color overlay, you can see what it's doing. It's creating kind of an abstract effect. So after I got this result, it got me thinking about how far I can take this idea. So I tried another image. So I'm going to hide this layer and show you the next one. Wild, right? Make sure I'm on this layer. And let's take a look at what it's doing. The blend mode that I use here is different. It's one that I rarely use on anything else, but to create a unique special effect kind of looks like an Andy Warhol painting or something out of the 70s, you can use this blend mode. Let me show you the original image. This is just a stock image that once again had a lot of color and I use the blur tool to obscure the detail in this image. So all I want is blobs of color. The blur tool set to Gaussian at 100 is perfect for that. If you want to learn some other creative uses for the blur tool, I'll put a link to a complete video on that tool in the description area below for you. So let's go back to the layer and once again, play with the blend modes. You'll notice now we get a very different look. So if I choose darken anywhere, the color is darker than the original underlying black and white image, the color is going to show through. 
And of course, we can always adjust the opacity and mask it. Multiply darkens. Color burn darkens and adds contrast as well. So you're starting to see how you can get really creative with these tools. Lighten goes the opposite and doesn't work as well on this image. Overlay, once again, works great. You see the blocks of color, but the detail of the black and white image below still shows through. I suddenly had an idea to finish this image off. I remember I had a photo of a painting of the Cuban flag that I took when I was there, and I thought that would go really great over this image of Havana. So let's do that. I'm going to make the opacity 100% and then try the various blend modes. Look at that. Soft light is really cool. I think this is the favorite way I've ever done this image now, and I've edited this image probably dozens of times. So I hope you've gotten some neat ideas on how to add a splash of color to your black and white images using Luminar Neo. So just a reminder, if you enjoy my teaching style, check out Luminar Neo, the complete course now. It's a complete set of resources and information that you need to learn Luminar Neo from start to finish. To watch another video here on YouTube, just click one on the screen now. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Take care and I'll see you again soon.